Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. With the commodity sell-off continuing, the prices of steel, aluminum as well as other metals have hit multi-month lows, with gold and silver not being spared either. The dollar index hitting a fresh 20-year highs has coupled with recession fears and weakening demand in China on the back of fresh COVID curbs are prompting fears about a drop in demand for metals. Joining me on the show today is Peter McQuire. He's CEO at Exim Australia. Ole Hansen is Head of Commodity Strategy at Saxo Bank. We're also joined by Jonathan Barat, CIO of Probus Securities. And Peter, would you say that the currency has an equal big role to play here? Because we're looking at the dollar index trading at a 20-year highs. Uh, it is now that we also have a euro to parity to dollar as well. What a decline that we've seen in various other currencies, including a Japanese yen, which is now trading at a 27-year lows. Would you say that is one factor, what is happening in Europe? and with euro that seems to be putting pressure on metals too well exactly right manisha i mean who could have imagined a 108.60 you got yen 137 so i think it's just surprised it i think it surprised all traders if you would have said that in february where we're going to be in july uh most traders probably would have been a sense of disbelief and we just seem to be onward and upward as far as that US dollar, the impact it's having, as Ole said, as far as inflation fears, and that's just growing. So I, as everyone buckles down, we've got also Q2 earnings coming out. They start next week or later this week. So I'm really concerned as far as what the uh, Main Street's uh, appetite's going to be for goods, services, and uh, everything moving forward into Q3, Q4, and that, that spells one word, recession. Oh, well, and yet there is absolutely no support. Let's talk about each metal now. And uh, this one is to you, Peter. If we were supposed, if, if you look at aluminum, for example, Europe clearly seems to have cut down a lot of smelting because of the high energy prices there. But then China seems to be producing record amounts of aluminum. And we've seen prices come off by 41% from its all-time highs in this year itself. A 41% of a decline. And yes, it's still higher than what we saw in pre-COVID levels. How would you look at that metal? Well, it's currently at 2380, Manisha, and it seems to be a little bit of a falling knife. And so at the present, you'd have to say possibly 2200 is the number to look at. There just seems to be the, and I take on board what you said as far as China and its production, but there has to be an end user out there and the whole commodity complex just to, seems to be hemorrhaging all the way through. If you look at even the agricultural sector, that's just been spanked down. So yes, at the moment, it seems to be heading south and uh, it's hard to put a number to it. I wouldn't be surprised even if it starts to, you know, you even break 2,000. But um, that may be a little bit more bearish than, uh, than what it could achieve. But nothing would surprise me in this market, Manisha. Mm. Uh, this one is to you, Peter, because when you look at the global demand and supply numbers, those also do not add up. Because what I have in front of me says that copper demand in 2021 had saw a growth of 4.5%, while this year may just see a growth of 2 to 3%. Aluminum growth last year was 8%. Demand growth this year may not be more than 2%. Zinc demand growth last year was 6 to 7%. This year may just be about 1 to 2%. So clearly, the first half has been evidence enough, and not too many people are betting on the second half either. Well, exactly right, Manisha. So it's going to be probably a flat line or if not a, a pullback as far as the next two quarters or, you know, this quarter and then the next fourth quarter. So the overall theme and I think the appetite is one of, uh, of consolidation. We're seeing it in price. We're understanding what the global picture is, is far from an inflation side. There's a lot of fear in the market. Sentiment is one very, very bearish. I'll go out on a limb here. If you see crude come back to 80 bucks a barrel or 70, then I think that you'll see a very big pullback on a number of those other base metal prices and very, very quickly. So uh, there's a that is the I think the outlier at the moment. If uh, the situation does uh, maintain at this hundred dollar barrel for crude, then um, I think that's going to flatline a number of these commodities. But I'm I'm really thinking that you might see a pullback even there. Crude comes down 10 or 15, and uh, that could change the whole dynamic again to a, a, another leg lower. Well, that's about the precious metal, but the ferrous markets. And uh, Peter, how would you look at the ferrous markets right now? Because clearly China is the biggest player here, and we've seen very sharp declines come in here too. Well, exactly right, Manisha. I mean, it's just a, another falling sword. 
So, you know, whilst China is the, the gorilla in the room, we're very conscious that there needs to be, you know, end consumers out there and people wanting to buy those particular products and finished products. And there just doesn't seem to be the great appetite that we were seeing in, you know, the lead up of 18, 19, 20. And now, you know, here we are in mid 22 and the ferrous market is very, very well, fairly soft to put it mildly. And uh, whether that can be a turnaround in the next two, well, this quarter and leading up to Christmas, We'll, we'll just have to wait and see, but uh, I'm not I'm not hanging my hat out there trying to get a breath of fresh air. I think it's going to be a little bit further doom and gloom for the market. Peter, what is your sense? What where are you most bearish on in case of metals? And would you also agree that another five percent of a decline from here is perhaps a given? Well, I'm, I'm not going to say five percent can't happen, and maybe ten. And uh, you know, no one really knows, Manisha. You'll know in a month or two's time when you look back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, aluminium, 2380. I think copper's got the potential. You know, it's at 75, 75.50. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised if copper hits a 7100 handle in the over the July period. I really think that it's that it may just happen. Uh, that US dollar index, if it's 110, 111, uh, and I think that it's probably got the potential to be there in the short run then, yeah, I think there's further downside for a number of those key commodities. Mm. And, Peter, as you said, are you most bearish on aluminum then? And uh, do you think the other metals perhaps will start consolidating after that another uh, leg of decline there? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, absolutely, Manisha. And uh, I think that you probably... It's hard to ascertain where we see... Uh, the floor, but at the present, I'm, I'm, yes, I am bearish on a number of those uh, those base metals, and I think that the overall uh, condition moving forward is one of a, a very gloomy, as it says there, a gloomy outlook. Well, yes, it is a gloomy outlook. <laughs> Sentiment is poor. Well, it does sound like that. All three of you are on the same page, really, that it's still not a buy in metals. China is at the centre of it all. And, uh, well, yes, the month of July does not look so good. And another 5 even 10% of a decline is what the markets should perhaps be prepared for. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And that's all the time that we have on this edition. We will track all the action from the commodity space right here on Commodity Champions in next week. Stay tuned with CNBC TV 18, though, for more news and updates coming up soon.